Leviathan is coming, but the Tyranids are a many tentacled invasion force, with beasts of all different colours and adaptations swarming to devour all other life in the galaxy. So today we're going to paint five different Tyranid schemes to get inspired for when the Leviathan box set arrives. I haven't yet got my hands on those sweet new models, but the birthing pools have granted new life to some old termigants. They're coming, Meg. <laughs> The swarm. The swarm are coming. The birthing pools are ready. And where better to start than with the poster boys for 10th edition, Hive Fleet Leviathan. Starting from a white prime, I begin by painting the body with an off-white. It's easiest to paint the body first, as they'll be much harder to reach than the armour panels, so we can save time by painting in this order. Next up, Reichland Flesh Shade, which I water down a fair amount. If you have it, Karaberg Crimson will probably get you closer to the box art, but I'm still happy with how this looks in the end. This is applied all over the body, with particular focus to recesses and where it meets the chitinous armour. There are some areas where some staining has occurred that I don't want, so I neaten these up with some thinned off white. Now on to base coating the chitin. For this, it's 50-50 black and purple, being really careful near the edges so as not to splash on the body underneath. If you do, don't worry, just clean up with some off-white and Reichland Flesh Shade if needed. I also used the off-white on my palette for some highlights around the face and tail. I wanted big and bold for the schemes today, so I added Carmine Red to the palette for the weaponry. This was highlighted with Scarlet, and then more Reichland Flesh Shade was used to shade not just the gun, but the weird skin lesions across the skin too. Now for the fun part. Using purple in thin scratches, I added growth lines to the plates, focusing around the bottom of each plate of chitin. I added some white to the purple, and used this for even smaller lines across all the plates. With some careful application of lemon yellow for the eyes, and some quick touch-ups, here's our High Fleet Leviathan Termagant all done. Before we move on to our next High Fleet, be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons for the channel for more biomass consuming goodness. Next up, on to the Kraken. We're starting again from a white base coat and then off white, but then we're going to shade all over with Seraphim Sepia. It's amazing how different just a slightly different wash makes the overall feel of the model. A few touch ups with off white for more spiky areas and it's on to the carapace. After base coating with chocolate brown, I lay it over with some cavalry brown, which is more dark red than brown. I next based the gun with Death Guard green and washed over with Beale Tan green. Interestingly, in the 9th edition codex, not all the armour panels are red, the ones on the gun are a sort of teal colour. I started these off with a dark grey green, which I also added to all the hooves and claws. For a couple of highlights, I used the confusingly named green grey for the gun. I added medium blue into the dark grey green and used this mix on the gun casing in lines as shown on the Leviathan nid. I added a bit of white, using this for the final small line highlights. For the red carapace, I settled on vermilion for my highlight, which I applied in the same way. To this, I added lemon yellow for the last line highlight. And after a last few touch-ups, here's our High Fleet Kraken Tyranid. Next up is High Fleet Hydra, which is a bit different as we're starting from a black base coat, but the basics are the same. For the most riveting footage of this episode, I applied Vallejo Black over the whole model to ensure the right finish instead of relying on the black primer. Onto this, I tried layering Vallejo purple, but it was way too bright, so I went with a 50-50 mix with black. I shaded the body with Druki Violet, and I then highlighted the skin with purple, leaving the darker colour in the shadows. Now High Fleet Hydra has two different black armours. For one, I'll be highlighting grey on the head and hooves, and for the other, it's blue highlights on the armour panels, with sky blue added to medium blue for the final lines. Meg and I love this scheme, it's the colour scheme of her nids from 9th edition. How are you guys planning on painting up your Tyranids for 10th, and where did you get your inspiration from? Let me know in the comments down below. At this point, I thought the purple was looking a little flat, so I added some white into the purple from before, focusing this in highlights on the face. This did end up being a bit too stark, so I came back in with purple to smooth it out. A lot of this scheme is quite dark, lending itself to a poppy accent colour, and for this I used a lime green on the gun, cables and skin lesion thingies. I finally washed over all of these with Beale Tan Green. And here's our High Fleet Hydra Termagant, a silent assassin from the darkness between stars. Next up, the Behemoth. For this model I wanted to push the values of my colours to ridiculous cartoony proportions. Behemoth's red and blue lends itself really well to this. 
Another white prime for this one to help the colours pop, followed by a coat of carmine red, which I applied in two thin layers to make Duncan proud. I shaded this with Reichland Flesh Shades, but as these shadows weren't dark enough on their own, I bolstered them with watered down cavalry brown. I then base coated the armour panels with German grey. I then attempted to base coat with flat yellow for the gun to get the full primary colour triangle, however I decided to go over it with off-white before attempting the yellow once again for much better coverage and brighter colour. The red skin got even brighter with a highlight of vermilion, and the yellow got temporarily darker with seraphim sepia. I highlighted the armour with scratchy lines of medium blue, before then adding sky blue for the final layers just like on my Hydra termagant. I used the German grey and blue recipe for the lesions across the skin too, before finishing off with off-white teeth and highlights on the yellow. And so here we have it, a very jazzy and very 90s looking Hive Fleet Behemoth termagant. Let's move on to look at our final Hive Fleet, Jormungander. This scheme is awesome, even if I don't know how to pronounce the name at all. One thing that I do know a little bit about while I paint black on black is Element Games. If you're looking at getting some Tyranids for 10th edition, consider checking out my affiliate links to Element Games in the description down below. You get discounted hobby products, I get a kickback at no additional cost to you, so thanks for supporting the channel by using those links. I then highlighted up the black body using a medium C grey, which I'm sketching onto raised areas. The main focus of this scheme though has to be the yellow carapace. From my experience, trying to add yellow over a dark undercoat is an exercise in futility, so I start with a base coat of sky grey. With this applied evenly, I can start adding the yellow, and it's so much better. Having said that, it does still take a few coats to apply smoothly. This flat yellow is just what it says on the tin, flat, so I apply a layer of Cassandora yellow to bump up the warmth and contrast. Watch out for this pooling where you don't want it, and don't hair dry the layers to dry them more quickly like I did, it will only blow the thin paint around. Now the yellow is looking pretty punchy, so we can go easy on other highlight colours, like using a flat red for the lesions and weapon. With a few final grey highlights, here's some High Fleet Jormungander Termagant action. This has been a really fun and eye-opening experience, using some colours that I don't get to use as frequently. Let me know which is your favourite in the comments below. Games Workshop has also announced some new Hive Fleets in the Leviathan book, so let me know if you'd like me to paint some of those up. In the meantime, my name has been Ollie, this has been my hobby, and I'll see you next time.